EWTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, in this month of November, let us pray for the blessed repose of the souls, of the holy souls in purgatory. And our prayer response tonight is, grant them light and peace, O Lord. Absolve, O Lord, the souls of the faithful departed from every bond of sin, and by the help of your grace, may they enjoy the happiness of eternal life. For the souls of our departed friends, relatives, and benefactors, we pray, grant them light and peace, O Lord. For those of our family, who have fallen asleep in your bosom, O Jesus, we pray. Grant them 
for priests who are our pastors, superiors, or spiritual directors, we pray. For men or women who are our teachers in school, we pray. For those who were our employers or employees, we pray. For those who were our associates in daily toil, we pray. For any soul whom we ever offended, we pray. For our enemies now departed, we pray. For those souls who have none to pray for them, we pray. For those forgotten by their friends and relatives, we pray. For all deceased seminarians and religious, we pray. For all our brethren in the faith everywhere, we pray. For all our separated brethren who deeply love thee, we pray. For those souls who need or in life asked our prayers, we pray. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray. Be mindful, O Lord, of all your servants and handmaids who are gone before us with the sign of faith and repose in the sleep of grace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant, we beseech thee, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. They all bless the ways of the Lord, the righteous judge who reveals the things that are hidden. And they turned in prayer, beseeching that the sin which had been committed might be wholly blotted out. Judas took up a collection man by man to the amount of 2,000 drachmas of silver and sent it to Jerusalem to provide for a sin offering. In doing this, he acted very well and honorably, taking account of the resurrection. For if he were not expecting that those who had fallen would rise again, it would have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. But if he was looking for the splendid, looking to the splendid reward that is laid up for those who fall asleep in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Therefore he made atonement for the dead, that they might be delivered from their sin. Verbum Domini. Why should we pray for the faithful departed? It seems to be something that's fallen out of fashion. And I'll give you a number of reasons why we should pray for the holy souls in purgatory, and we call them holy souls because they're not lost. Their reward is heaven. 
but they are being prepared for that life of glory as they were not completely ready for that perfect life of heaven yet. And when you think about the fact that during this half hour, 3,000 people will die. 150,000 people die each day. It's quite conceivable, isn't it, that not all of them are ready for glory. And so why we pray for the holy souls? First, to obey the Lord and his church. Every year, November 2nd, we have a Mass for the Holy Souls, an annual reminder of the teaching of how we should pray for the Holy Souls. And so Masses are offered, offered especially on that day and throughout the month of November for the blessed repose of the souls. Secondly, as an act of love of our neighbor, it is, after all, a spiritual work of mercy, praying for the living and for the dead. Thirdly, to express our unity with the members, the other members of God's family. And so there is a supernatural bond that we have with the saints in glory and with those in purgatory and with us who are here on earth, that we are united in Christ. And so there is this bond of charity this unity that we have, and we express this in asking our brothers and sisters in glory to assist us with their prayers, and in our turn, assisting our brothers and sisters in purgatory. Many of the saints, in fact, had experiences of the holy souls. Here's a list of a few of them. St. Teresa of Avila, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, St. Francis of Rome, St. Catherine of Genoa, St. Gertrude, St. Margaret Mary, St. Bernardine of Siena, St. Peter Claver, St. Bridget, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Bernard, St. Margaret of Cortona, St. Stanislaus, St. Pio. St. Pio said that more souls from purgatory came to his masses than the living. Fourthly, we help to purify those souls, that our offerings, our prayers, are part of this bond of charity that unites us, that we assist them. And the Catechism says that we, in our turn, receive help from their prayers, and even more so when they enter the light of glory. Next, we face death and thereby become more aware of reality, that our life here is temporary. And so in remembering the holy souls, it reminds us to be more resolved not to sin. And so our, that resolution grows stronger in us as we face the truth of our own temporary existence. Next, we do receive, as I just mentioned, the benefit of the prayers of those in Purgatory, Catechism number 958. We also share in the pouring out of God's mercy. We rejoice for all of those in purgatory will go in heaven. We enter more deeply into the mystery of God's love and his plan for salvation. So those are all good reasons for us to especially remember them, remember them in this month of November. And we know, as I said, it's kind of fallen out of fashion. And usually when you have a card that has, uh, you go to a funeral and you have a prayer card there, often there is not even any prayer for that person on that card. And so I would recommend, as kind of your own insurance, your purgatory insurance, that maybe you want to make up your own card ahead of time, without the final date, of course, but a prayer for the holy souls. I did. I want people to pray for me when I pass from this life into the next, and not to assume the best or the worst, but to assist me with their prayers. And so it is, it is a holy and a pious thought for us 
to remember these holy souls? What are ways for us to avoid or lessen our own purgatory? My final remarks. Catechism 1473. While patiently bearing sufferings and trials of all kinds, and when the day comes, serenely facing death, the Christian must strive to accept this temporal punishment of sin as a grace. He should strive by works of mercy and charity, as well as by prayer and the various practices of penance, to put off completely the old man and to put on the new man. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the, may the, souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
panem de cero prestitis dies. Oremos, Deus qui nobis of sacramentum erabi, passionis tui memoriam requisti, tribue quesumus, ita nos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tui fructum in nobis jugiter sensiamus. Qui vivis ad regnas in secula seculorum. the divine praises together. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ to God and to man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament, be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.